good to have you back on the show, the long-standing uh, run and uh, relevant show, which is Code Green. And I can say that because I'm not the usual host, so I can have a little bit more objective point of view. So this is Howard's show, Howard Wick. And when Howard is not doing Code Green, he's greening the code, the building code. So he's out and about to explore a next dimension in that. And for the time being, he basically wanted in a show uh, two fellow academics and two fellow uh, Northern Europeans to explore more potential of another dimension, and that's the third dimension. And for that, I want to welcome our guest today, who is Harmian Steenhus. I hope I pronounced that Steenhus, well enough. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's close that it gets. Uh, who is professor of business at HPU. Yep. And actually, the, the in-house location, I can say, you have your office here in the same building. In the same building, so, yeah. So we're neighbors in many ways. Yep. And if we could get the first image up here, uh, and you tell us, please, what that potential of the, thir the, the third dimension is that you're interested in? So it's really about 3D printing. Mm -hmm. And the images that you see over here on the left kind of explains how 3D printing works. So 3D printing is when you basically print something, <clears throat> but you print it in three dimensions. So it's kind of like a copier, but mm -hmm. you just have ink and it just keeps going. So mm -hmm. that, that image over here shows that it's a layers. And with the layers, you just build one layer at a time until you have your, your product. Now, one of the advantages of that, and that's the other image on the screen, is that you can actually make uh, complex products because you're, you're doing it layer at a time. So <clears throat> in uh, traditional manufacturing, the, the object that you see over there is not possible to make because you would start with a medical block mm -hmm. and you have to take materials away. Yeah. And when you do that, you cannot get on the inside. You cannot make yeah. that kind of a, a product. Or, or it takes an incredible effort, right, and additional machinery to do that Well, usually you would actually yeah. have to end up like uh, assembling something. So mm -hmm. you'd have to have yeah, different yeah, yeah. parts and mm -hmm. then assemble something. Mm -hmm. But with 3D mm -hmm. printing, you can actually make movable parts, complex parts, mm -hmm. less weight. Mm -hmm. So there are some mm -hmm. advantages of having Absolutely. this kind of technology. Yeah. And you told me up front there is different uh, systems, different ways, actually seven uh, of doing that. And let's yes. look at these and please explain these to us. Yeah, so what I have on this slide is basically there are seven kind of technologies on how you can uh, make something with 3D printing or mm -hmm. additive manufacturing. So all of them have the same system where you, you create a, an object layer by layer, mm -hmm. but you can do it in different ways. So material extrusion is where you basically have a plastic, you melt, well, it could be different materials but essentially you have a plastic and you pour it into a pattern and mm -hmm. then somehow it solidifies that photopolymerization is when you have a liquid and we have another picture of that Powder bed fusion is when you actually have a, um, a, uh, a container that has a powder in it and mm -hmm. you use like a laser to solidify and melt the powder together. So it's used, uh, for example, for metals. Mm -hmm. Material jetting and binder jetting are when you use droplets. Uh, sheet lamination is when you use entire sheets and directed energy deposition is something where you have like a high, a high, po uh, high powered energy field to fuse things together. Okay. So there's different technologies. Good. Yeah. So let's sort of illustrate one of these systems. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this one, the machine that you see on the top is, um, is basically a container. So that container has a liquid, mm -hmm. and then the schematic on the left kind of explains how it works. So in this case, you use like, a, let's say, a laser. You use some kind of light, and the laser basically um, solidifies a layer of the liquid. So it's a special liquid. It's mm -hmm. not just any liquid. Mm -hmm. It's a special liquid. So you, you basically uh, form one layer. And then you move the, the, the tray one layer up or down, and this is um, you know, a, a tenth of a millimeter or mm -hmm. uh, five hundredths of a millimeter, something like that. So mm -hmm. very, very small scale. Mm -hmm. And then you basically create an object layer by layer. So the example of the object is, is something that you can make uh, mm -hmm. in this way with this kind of technology. Yeah, fascinating. And let's look at another application or another. S well, this is your, your yeah. research, uh, Alchemist Chamber. Yeah, so the, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I have this in my office. So this is material extrusion, mm -hmm. and in my case, I have two printers. Um, they are, and they use plastic, so you see the, the rolls of plastic on top of the machines. They basically melt. Uh, there's a, a, um, a um, extruder, um, and in it, you have a heating uh, element. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to see, but on the one on the left, you see a little bit of a red tube on the bottom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's where the, the plastic is melted out, and then it creates a pattern. Mm -hmm. Now, just most people have a question, well, how expensive are these machines? 
So the one on the left I bought, that company is now out of business. It's a very tough uh, field, actually. But I bought it for about $500. Mm -hmm. The one on the right is about $1,000. Okay. So it's not that expensive mm -hmm. to have these machines at and home. And how large are the objects you can make? Um, I think the one on, on my, the machine on my right, uh, on the right, I think it's about 12 by 12 or 12 inches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, it's reasonable. Yeah. And depending on the machine, there is actually applications of different sizes. And that let, let's get to the next slide that shows us larger applications. Yes, right? so there's a, a large variety of different machines and different methods. So what we see over here is really the kind of the capabilities. On the top uh, right is a picture of a house. This house is printed by a company in China. Mm -hmm. Now what they do is, is a little bit special. They actually make wall sections, mm -hmm. and then they bring the wall sections together and assemble the house. Mm -hmm. They claim that that house was built in about 72 hours mm -hmm. uh, for about $160,000. It's about 12,000 square feet, very large. Mm -hmm. The one on the bottom left, uh, if you look at it, you'll see a pencil. You, maybe you see a little white dot on top of the pencil, <laughs> and then it zooms out, and you'll see that there's actually a cathedral on top of the pencil. So this is nanoscale. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it really, there's a large variety of capabilities that you can have with this technology. Yeah, yeah. That's on the construction, by the way, the, mm -hmm. uh, so one of the uh, organizations that invests a lot in this technology is yeah. NASA. Yeah. And they're interested in uh, housing because of uh, space travel. Yeah. It's very expensive to send a sp uh, brick yeah. into space, yeah, yeah. but sending a, a, a printer is a lot cheaper. And that being said, uh, we're a little bit for our you know, planet. We're a little bit what Mars is for the universe, we're a little bit in Hawaii for our globe, right? Because yep. we're in the middle of nowhere, most yep. remote from all land masses, or we're in the middle of everywhere, depending on how you like to look at it, right? So that being said, let's get to the next slide, which is the beginning of a couple of slides that makes us look at maybe more specific applications to our islands and our very you know, uh, uh, urgent demands, right? Yeah, so I have a couple of slides here that show kind of, demonstrate kind of what you can do. Mm -hmm. So on the bottom left is a car. Uh, there's already a company in the U.S. that, that prints cars. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to change the entire car industry because um, even Tesla the most has, I think, the most modern factory right now. It's fully automated, but it has a lot of really expensive equipment. So to make a car, the company that's making cars in the U.S. already in 3D printing, you just have one large printer, mm -hmm. and then you can make a variety of cars, yeah. and it's very easy to, to, to have design changes. So this is just a demonstration of the capabilities. And what you see on that car, for example, is the seat. You can print the seat. You can print a dashboard. You can print a, a steering wheel. You may not be able to print every part of the car, but by and large, you can have a lot of cost savings. And for Hawaii, one of the advantages is, no, I don't know if you've had any issues with your cars. I have issues with my cars. And when they break down, sometimes I have to wait a long time for a spare part. Yeah. You can actually just print the spare mm -hmm. parts. Mm -hmm. If you had like more printing capabilities on yeah. Hawaii, yeah, yeah. that would be really helpful. On the top right, we have another one. This is where there's a lot of applications it's in the medical field. So mm -hmm. this is an example of prosthesis, but they have other ones. We'll have some example on another slide. But there's a lot of different uh, options. Pharmaceuticals, medicine is another one where mm -hmm. you can have like uh, um, very specific diagnosis uh, or um, printing of very specific uh, portions of medicine for mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I heard of the situation where someone was waiting for a, a life existential medication and it had to be shipped in, you know, and that's pretty nerve wracking. Yeah, so if you could right? do that, print it locally. And as far as the cars, I want to add, I have my, my doc student, Siraj, hi Siraj, is actually working, his, his thesis is about taking advantage of the technology of self-driving cars, but it got him basically to totally rethink the infrastructural system we have on the island, which all its you know, there are a few pros actually, there are many cons, right? Yes. <laughs> as you said, the breakdown yeah. and and, and so, so here, and also the cars, we basically, because there's no car manufacturing here traditionally, so they all get imported. Yep. And you can call it invasive, and most of them are actually made for cultures and climates like where we come from, where it gets pretty cold, gets down to the freezing point, yep. and below that in the Netherlands and in Germany. So you need that full enclosure to survive, but not so much here. So that car here, it's not specifically made for Hawaii, but we're gonna say it should be, and it could be, Yep. It's basically convertible, right? So because in, in all the fields we're talking, you know, economy and ecology have to team up, right, at the beginning of yep. the 21st century. And it's all about basically minimizing consumption. 
And here you just basically print the bottom of the car because the top you kind of don't need, right? right, right. So all these very interesting island specific I learned that term from my partner who is, has a business background in education. Yeah. He said USP, the unique selling proposition, right? Yes, exactly. That we can cultivate here in Hawaii. So I, I would say if you look at cars, so for example, the reason why Ford or General Motors, yeah. even Tesla has such a large factory is because of economy of the scale. So yeah, you have yeah. to produce a lot of the same product. Mm -hmm. What 3D printing does is it takes it away because yeah, you yeah. can just print, it doesn't matter whether you print one or a hundred units, yeah, the, yeah. The, the cost can be the same. Uh huh. And that gets us to, and can get the next slide, another really interesting implication. Well, okay, before that, talk about this one here. Here are the yeah. applications. So this is just a couple of examples of what is possible in 3D printing. Mm -hmm. So on the top left, so my printers are very simple. So I just yeah, have yeah. one kind of plastic mm -hmm. and it prints like a plastic piece. But on the top left is what is, uh, so this is one of the other technologies, one of the other seven technologies. Mm -hmm. But you can see like what you can do, right? And so the, the colors and some of it is actually clear. So it's amazing. Um, this is, for example, used in medicine field, like in, in cases, um, in some instances, they already print, uh, like before they operate, they scan you, MRI yeah, or yeah. CT scan or something, and they can use that to then print, and mm -hmm. they can look at it before it actually operates. So mm -hmm. this kind of a thing is really useful. It's also useful for education. Mm -hmm. The one next to that is, uh, is a shoe. This one happens to be Adidas, but the point is that actually in the shoe industry, they benefit a lot from 3D printing, and the reason is because shoes have a variety of sizes, yeah. people have different feet, so men's shoes, women feet, uh, w women's shoes, wide, not wide, and for all of that they need molds, which is expensive. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the shoe industry is one where actually the 3D printing has taken mm -hmm. off a lot. Yeah, yeah. The bottom left is close, so you can already print close. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we'll, we'll see more and more improvements. And then on the bottom uh, right, that's a heart. So they already printed a heart. Now, I didn't really know, I don't really know that much about uh, the med medicine field, but there's been a lot of effort on printing basically a kidney because mm -hmm. a lot of people have kidney problems. So yeah. if you could print a kidney yeah, yeah. and you would use your own DNA, then mm -hmm. you don't have rejection issues, so mm -hmm. it will make things mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. The technology is not that far yet, but they've printed a heart. Now, the interesting thing, the heart is actually a lot easier because apparently the heart is just a big muscle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once you're able to build a, to print a muscle, mm -hmm. then you can print a heart and, and you can yeah, print yeah, like, yeah. You know, organs. Very interesting. So this is already happening. No, that sounds great. And while yeah. my heart, being a German, is with Adidas because it's a German <laughs> company, <laughs> yes. but we want to be island specific, USP yes. Hawaii, right? Yes. So uh, the most common footwear is actually the Jesus Poly sandal, which we all know which is a very climatically appropriate footwear here. Yep. My, my co-host is Soto Brown, Bishop Museum historian, told me that traditionally Hawaiians didn't have shoes and imagine they walked on lava rock on the big island, mm -hmm. pretty mm -hmm. tough, right? Yes. But the, the Jesus Poly sandal is, uh, you know, is an open shoe, so, um, but what always had sort of like, I would say puzzled, but worried me is, is again, um, its nature. Uh, because it's made from plastic, so it's petroleum based, and obviously we have to ship in the oil. Yep. Relative to that, you have a solution as well, and that gets us to the next slide, and that's very exciting. Yes, yeah, so this is, uh, this is an example of uh, something that I think would be really beneficial for Hawaii. Um, I don't have the financial figures on it, but I saw this on a, uh, on a 3D printing show that I uh, attended. The machine on the bottom left is a machine that uh, basically um, chops off, uh, uh, chops off plastic. So what you see in there, the the orange that you see is actually lids from orange containers. Mm -hmm. That machine chops it off into a powder. The powder goes in the machine on the right, and then with that you create filament. And mm -hmm. that filament I could use on my printer. Mm -hmm. So when you think about Hawaii being an island in the middle of the ocean and having a lot of trash and a lot of plastics. Instead of shipping the plastics off or burning it off or whatnot, what we could do on this island is recycle it, create, for example, filament for printing. And that's not necessarily printing for final products. We mm -hmm. could, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but you could, for example, do like prototyping. So let's say that you want to design a new shoe. You could actually use it, print a shoe, because, mm -hmm. you know, we, obviously mm -hmm. you can print shoes. Um, and maybe even for for uh, for actual products that you, that you could sell. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if the orange slippers would be a good thing, but you <laughs> no, know, they actually I, they actually come now. They have different talking colors and varieties and mass customization. They actually don't just come in that traditional brownish, greenish, uh, beigeish. You know, they actually come now. They have to adjust and adapt to different customer tastes. So there is yeah. actually an orange one. 
which yeah, yeah. There is you go. good for my Dutch background because yes. orange is our color. There you go. Yes. There you go. Exactly. So on, if you go back to the for a moment to the shoes. So actually with the shoes, what is happening is there's different uh, business models. Mm -hmm. So and this is the big question right now for 3D printing. So mm -hmm. are we going to have, let's say, um, a situation where you have a scanner at home, you scan your feet, yeah. and then you send it into a company and mm -hmm. they'll print you a shoe. Mm -hmm. Uh, or are we going to have a situation where, for example, you go to a retail store and they scan your feet yeah. and then they show you some products and say, which one do you want? Mm -hmm. And then they'll print it for you. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they scan your feet and then they send it out to a centralized location yeah. and print it. Or will you have a situation where you just scan and print at home? Mm -hmm. So we don't really know. Most people don't think that it's going to happen at home, mm -hmm. but there's already actually some files out. So Nike, for example, already mm -hmm. has files that you can download and you mm -hmm. can print your own shoes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, fascinating. Yeah. See, I think women would, would go for this a lot because yeah, well. you would print some sh nice shoes, you would yeah. just use them for an evening out, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then recycle them and print something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I guess gets us to the to the question of the total. We we want to be we're a critical format here, so we want to be our own devil's advocates. About we probably have to look into the sort of on the on the cradle to cradle observation, like the whole life cycle. Yeah. I guess um, ecological footprint, right? So I think that has to be taken into consideration as well. And it is obviously different with the different models, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because to what degree do you kind of cut out logistics, which is a Big thing, you know. Yes. We already touched on transportation, and there's another field where we have a lot. I mean, you know, way back, this place was basically literally in the middle of nowhere because no one knew about it, and the people living here didn't know about anything else because we're the most remote from all landmass. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, there were almost as many people living here as there are now, and they self-sustained themselves, right? Um, as far as everything, and obviously food, right? Right now we're having, we're shipping in everything. I think 85% or something we ship in, and and we shouldn't, right? We should mm -hmm. get back to be self-sustained. And so yep. in the food sector, you have something also very fascinating to offer, and that gets us to the next slide. Let's look at that and tell us about it. Yeah, so this is an example of, um so the, the top one, uh, there's actually two parts on the slide, but the top one is uh, KLM or Dutch Airlines, which is already recycling water bottles mm -hmm. to make tools. Mm -hmm. So that's already an application of yeah, the recycling, and yeah. yeah. that's something we could do in Hawaii. The bottom is actually a 3D printed vegan steak. <laughs> and if you look at uh, meat production, it turns out that meat production is it takes an incredible amount of energy. Just having, let's say, cows or, yeah. or pigs, yeah, the, yeah. the food that needs to be produced and all. So if you calculate it all out, it's extremely expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this might be an alternative. On the food, the interesting thing is there's already a company that prints uh, pizzas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, again, and actually that company was funded by NASA, mm -hmm. which again goes back to space travel, because mm -hmm. it's very expensive mm -hmm. to have all mm -hmm. the food shipped mm -hmm. to space. Mm -hmm. But if you have a 3D mm -hmm. printer, yeah, yeah. Um, then it becomes a lot more feasible. Yeah, yeah. So I think these, kind of, these are great examples, I yeah, think, yeah. for Hawaii, being in the middle of nowhere yeah. and being able to sustain yeah, yourself yeah. with you know. yeah, we, we have big challenges with dairy here and basically, you know, I mean, all the, the lust and the hunger for a steak, you know, of the tourist industry yeah, that yeah. runs us, talking and economics, right? You, there's yeah. no way on the island you can provide for that need, for that demand, right? right so this right. is all going to be shipped in. Yep. So if you That's market expensive. this right, right, yep. uh, yeah. and international management and marketing is, is your field, right? If you market this right and saying, well, this is good for the planet and it's good for you mm -hmm. and it's innovative, you know, then might as well try it. You know, if you, if you come to Hawaii, you know, what, what's the point to basically eat a steak that comes from half around the world here in Hawaii? Does that yeah. make feel you good? You know, right. is a steak even still good? You know? And maybe it is as far as, you know, it was refrigerated, right? But if you think about the carbon footprint, and that, that reminds yep. me, by the way, of a, of a student when I was still in the, in the prairie in Nebraska, there was a student when economy was sort of like in the 2008-ish realm, right? Yeah, yeah. He got a foot in the door to ConAgra, which is one of the, the biggest uh, food manufacturers in the U.S., 
and was tracking, you know, how much energy it takes to make a conventional steak and this kind of prepackaged food. It was two yeah. gallons, yeah. and that's like from the, you know, the irrigation of the farming and the tractors, and then the trucks. And he was mapping yeah. this kind yeah. of surreal kind of different processing centers all yeah. across the continental U.S. Absurd, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. up to the point in the grocery stores and being refrigerated. So two gallons. So if if you think about that, yeah, and that's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. We're, we're hoping and assuming that you would be way competitive to that. Yeah. Right? Okay. So another thing on the food is this is not a very interesting uh, application. So again, what, with 3D printing, what you can do is you can customize stuff. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um, you know, if you go to a supermarket, somebody you can you can get like you know birthday cake, and they yeah, have yeah, to make yeah, it yeah. special yeah. for you. Yeah, but yeah. if you have a printer that makes mm -hmm. the cake, mm -hmm. then you can design it however you want, and mm -hmm. it will just come out the printer. Mm -hmm. Another major advantage of the food printing is. Um, so it turns out if you look at old people, old people have a lot of problems with their teeth and yeah, they don't yeah. necessarily have the ability to chew food yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the applications for food 3D printing is they actually print like kind of like a paste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It still has enough nutrition. Yeah, yeah. You can you can design it with enough nutrition yeah, yeah. and still have something that looks presentable yeah, yeah. and will make you know people Just still it, eat that. As it's illustrated here, that looks very sort of chewy, you know. Yeah, it looks like kind of like a steak. It doesn't seem there is a bone in there, right? No, that you're no. gonna yeah. Chew on and cut they your actually do up. a lot of work on, on trying to get the texture yeah, just yeah. right so it's kind of similar yeah, yeah. to our real steak. No, yes. Okay. Yeah, let's go to the next slide and actually show us what you have been playing with, Brian. Yeah, so these are just a couple of examples that I have over here. So uh, on, on kind of on the top over there is like a, a jet engine mm. uh, that, that was actually printed in parts. Uh, but I think this is a really good example of what you could do in school. So mm -hmm. if you have an engineering program, you yeah. could print something like that or have your students print it. Yeah, yeah. And you could see how does it actually work. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, some other examples is on the on the left, uh, the, the blue thing is actually a measuring cup and mm -hmm. it has all the different kind of measures. So mm -hmm. we actually use this at home for, for, for baking something. And you actually had a, had a situation a while ago where you yes. were short on something yes. and help yourself out. Yes, Share this that. was at uh, Christmas. So we yeah, were trying yeah. to make cookies and we needed to, to use a funnel for something. I, I didn't know where my funnel was. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find it. And so I just downloaded a file from the internet, put it on my printer, printed out my funnel. And, you know, it's cheaper than going to the store, and it would have taken me more time to mm -hmm. go to the store, find it, and then mm -hmm. drive back home mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than just printing it. Mm -hmm. So that that's again, mm -hmm. shows you, like, mm -hmm. what you can actually do with this technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can do the same with combs or something like that. The other blue thing over there is a coin holder for my car. Mm -hmm. So I lost my coin holder, uh, holder designed a new one, mm -hmm. uh, so the quarters would fit into it. cost me about, I, I think it was between $1 and $2 to, to print it. If I had bought it in a store, it would have been $15. Mm -hmm. um, the, the orange is a uh, nut and a bolt, and that's an example of how you can actually print these things together. Mm -hmm. So you can print it in one piece. That, yeah. that Again, in manuf traditional manufacturing, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. The gray is a little robot, and that one is printed in one piece, and it, again, it has just moved. The arms move, the head moves, the legs mm -hmm. move. Mm -hmm. I have a little tiki. Mm -hmm. That's another example of something that you could do in Hawaii, let's say, print like, you know, like souvenir type stuff. And again, yeah, yeah. thinking about recycling plastics yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then printing souvenirs. Yeah. Yeah. and just selling it to, to tourists, yeah. that'd be kind of a, a business yeah. model. Way better than on the conventional ones where it basically says, in best case, uh, designed in Hawaii and then made in China or exactly. elsewhere. Exactly. Right? So you can made. say designed here and made here, yes. right? 3D printed in exactly. Hawaii. Exactly, 3D printed in Hawaii, yeah. Yes. And that, if we can get the camera back to, uh, well, maybe we do the next slide here uh, really quick first um, and basically, um, talk about where our disciplines intersect and could cross, and you already touched on it, which is actually the building sector, right? Yep. And our uh, founding uh, Uncle Jay, who is sitting out there a while ago, has been shooting me an email and saying, Martin, what do you think about 3D printing houses? And he got very excited and yes. took Howard until now to get the right person to talk about that. And this is uh, the little thing I have to chip in here. That was from my Arizona desert days before I came here. There was a student of ours who basically was 3D printing with a different material. And if we could get the camera back to the studio here, uh, this is that piece. And this is a 3D printed concrete. And we have a concrete industry here that's doing prefab, Rocky Mountain, uh, Great Pacific out there in, in Campbell Industrial Park. So I'm sure they would be interested there. A little bit of devil's advocacy here as well um, as me teaching environmental systems mm -hmm. and 
the right materiality. Uh, the desert is is a temperate climate where you have very you know rather cold nights and and warm days. So thermal mass is actually something that the Adobe architecture traditionally has been uh, you know doing and using. And so thermal mass in the tropics is a little bit more problematic. So again, you should take everything with a with a grain of salt and and look at it. You know, but again, we're just pointing out potentials here. And the other thing we want to show here in studio is uh, the Star Advertiser uh, title page here from some days ago, which basically says pop-up shelter is here. And this is addressing our shortage for shelters for the urban and suburban nomads, as I like to call them, to avoid to say homelessness, which always stigmatizes that, right? While this here proposes uh, inflatable pop-up shelters of some kind, again, coming back to your analysis of saying, well, we're actually producing a lot of trash here and a lot of plastic. And if it only would stay on the island, uh, it's worse, right? Because we dump it in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So right there out on Midway, we have one of the largest accumulations of plastic trash. And unfortunately, there it has the biggest uh, um, 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 albatross population. Well, that's not unfortunate. That's fortunate. But unfortunate is, is this, that's where the, the beaches are basically plastic beaches. Yes. And the poor animals eat that. So basically help our sort of uh, ocean uh, fauna and, and at the same time help our island, uh, you know, humans, you could potentially 3D print uh, shelters yep. for our nomadic population, right? So you, yep. you do the ocean service and you do your people service. And because as of now, I'm assuming this gets produced in China somewhere and gets shipped in here. and. So you have a way more local solution yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah, you'd have to look at exactly what is it that you can that you can locally produce, and I think the the recycling you'd have to scale it up somehow. Yeah, but yeah. yes, I think, and especially if you look at the last couple of years, so this technology is moving very quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, the capabilities of machines a few years ago are not. Are, yeah. The technology actually goes back to 1983, mm -hmm. so it's actually mm -hmm. in existence a yeah, long yeah, time. Yeah. But it's in a way, it's very similar to um, computers. So when they started mm -hmm. home computers, they had these yeah, massive yeah, mainframes, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, 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 and yeah. now what you carry in your pocket can exactly. do more than those ma yeah, mainframes. Yeah. So it's kind of the same with the 3D printing, except. Exactly. Yeah. The whole movement is a lot quicker. So yeah. I, I certainly expect that it will improve where you actually have these capabilities to do the Absolutely. shelters and help homeless people, at the yeah. same time recycle yeah, yeah. your plastics, help the environment. No. So yeah. I think for Hawaii, it's a great technology. No, and with that, I think let's bring up the last slide here. This is encouragement for you because this is my co-host, Soto Brown in Human Human Architecture. He's a Bishop Museum historian. And this is one of his presentation pitches here that he points out this incredible, not sort of pre-contact uh, grass hut, hula skirt, you know, uh, kappa and malo tradition, but pretty much a, a post-contact uh, tradition of innovation. Uh, uh, King Kamehameha was designing these weird battleships. There is a German, which I asked you before, if you as the fellow, you know, neighbor, the Dutch neighbor knew about this song that my parents' generation and my grandparents knew there is no beer in Hawaii, which is only not, not, not true, but the opposite, the first uh, beer can is Primo Beer from Hawaii, and it goes on and on and on. So as, you know, stated there on top, the fourth industrial in, uh, revolution, revolution that you're yeah. pointing out to, could and should happen here and then be within that tradition of innovation on the islands. So with that, I want to thank you for uh, getting us excited about it. And we will watch you and follow you, how to, that gets implemented. And so okay. thank you very much. Well, for, thank you for, for having me on the insights. show. It's great. Thank you. And uh, hope to see you back for Howard's show uh, with Howard again in two weeks, Cold Green. And until then, please stay innovatively green. Bye-bye.